At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You lose! Good day, sir! How open to chem mistakes do we go through actual student responses to chemistry questions and look at what's wrong with them, and how to learn from that mistake uh, in order to really understand what the chemistry is behind this. Here we're looking at four different Lewis structures drawn by students, uh, all of which are incorrect. Uh, SF2, O3, NCO minus, and formaldehyde, CH2O. We want to look at why the student drew the Lewis structure incorrectly, what piece of information they were missing, and then how to use that then to kind of be able to do Lewis structures better for, for you. So the first one here, we have SF2, this is a Lewis structure drawn, and what's wrong with this one is that it has too many electrons. And specifically, we're talking about valence electrons here. So sulfur has six valence electrons, chlorine has seven, and chlorine has seven. So total, we have 20 electrons. Now we only draw the, Lewis, the valence electrons in Lewis structures. So our total number of electrons drawn in this should only be 20. And if we count up here, we have two, four, six here on the fluorine. There's two here, that's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. Now, one of the things you wanna be doing with your Lewis structures at the start, especially if you're struggling with putting together a complicated one like SF2, is looking at how many electrons do you have to work with. So we have 22 electrons drawn here, we should only have 20. An easy fix for that is to drop two of the ones from the sulfur, like this, and this gives us a Lewis structure that fits into all the scheme that we would like, and that would be our Lewis structure. Um, that's going to connect over here with this one here, which in this one we're looking at a case uh, where we're going to use formal charge to analyze the Lewis structure, and formal charge is a mechanism by which we can count electrons in a systematic way. So in formal charge, of the two electrons shared in each bond, we just give one to each, we assign one to each atom. So one electron goes to the nitrogen, one to the carbon, one to the nitrogen, one to the carbon, one to the carbon, one to the oxygen, one to the carbon, one to the oxygen. So total here, the carbon here has four valence electrons assigned to it. The nitrogen has six and the oxygen has six. Now nitrogen normally only has five valence electrons, so that means that this has a negative one formal charge. It has one more electron assigned to it than it should have. The carbon here has a zero formal charge because it has four electrons assigned to it, and it should have four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons assigned to it, and therefore it has zero formal charge. So the sum of the formal charges will give you the actual charge of the molecular ion, in this case it's minus one, if we've counted our electrons correctly. So if we go back and apply that to this Lewis structure here, that's a really simple way to count quickly. Here we can see the fluorines have seven electrons assigned to them, so they have a formal charge of zero. But the sulfur has two, four, six, plus two from the bonds, it has eight electrons assigned to them, so it currently has a minus two formal charge. Well, this can't add up to minus two if it's a neutral molecule overall with zero charge, and so therefore we know we've drawn the wrong number of electrons. Now come down here to our correct structure, here we have six electrons around the sulfur, everything has zero formal charge, and that matches our total charge of our molecule. Now in this Lewis structure, we have the correct amount of electrons, minus one, zero, zero, but our distribution of them is something that could be improved. And so this isn't necessarily an incorrect Lewis structure, but there is a better one available because there's another one where We can pull two electrons here to form a triple bond, move two electrons over here to the oxygen like this. So we haven't changed the number of electrons. We've shifted two to here and two to here. But by doing that, our formal charge is now zero, zero, and minus one. And the reason why that's better is because the oxygen is a more electronegative atom. Uh, and so pulling on extra electrons is easier for the oxygen to do than the nitrogen. And so in the tug of war of electron density, we're going to see a shift of negative charge over to this side. And this Lewis structure better represents that electron density residing in this area. And so if you can add up formal charge so that 
uh, or configure a formal charge in a way where the more electronegative elements get that formal charge, then that is considered to be a better Lewis structure. So really we would see a contribution of both of these in the actual molecule. We would probably see a bond link between carbon and nitrogen that is between a double and triple bond with more triple bond character than double bond. And we would see a single, between a single and double bond length and energy of this carbon to oxygen bond, but it would be more single than double in character. Okay. Um, the middle one here, we're looking at O3, and we have a Lewis structure here. If we go with formal charge here, we have a minus and a plus and a zero. So everything is good in terms of our numbers of electrons. The only problem with this one is that this one is able to transition between two different Lewis structures. And so this has what are called resonance forms. And the way to represent that, or a way to represent that, is to draw the one Lewis structure like this, and then have a double arrow where we are going to reposition all of the electrons while the nuclei are static. So the electrons kind of have a fluidity here. end up with this other Lewis structure. Now, to a novice chemistry student, this looks like I just redrew the molecule backwards and I've changed where the double and single bond is. To a trained chemist, however, they are noting that two electrons are coming here to form this double bond and are now absent from my final oxygen. Here I have three pairs of, three lone pairs of electrons, and I only have two, but one of those has been used to construct this double bond. And then this double bond is shifting over a pair of electrons to the oxygen here to create that final pair of electrons. And then we put the whole thing in brackets. This. There's a charge, you can include that outside of the brackets. So this is indicating that the electrons are delocalized or fluid within this molecule. So in other words, my oxygen nuclei are static here, and the electrons are transitioning back and forth between these states. Or really, I have a flow of electrons all over the molecule. Uh, and so that's described uh, as resonance, and these are called resonance structures. And really, a single one of these is insufficient to describe what the molecule actually looks like. I don't have a single bond and a double bond. I have two equidistant and equal, equal in energy bonds, degenerate bonds, uh, between these two sets of oxygen atoms. And so the sum of all of the Lewis structures is a better descriptor for that particular molecule than just drawing a single one. All right, and on to the last one here. Here we have formaldehyde. This student clearly is very lost on what they're doing. They're doing a lot of things that are very wrong. And so one of the problems is when they're reading this, they're reading this as the carbon has to be connected to the two hydrogens and the hydrogens to the oxygen. And that's not necessarily the case. And really, in order to come up with a Lewis structure for CH2O, one of the things that can be very useful is to think of this in terms of how many bonds does this thing normally make? How many bonds does carbon normally make, hydrogen, and oxygen? And there's some limitations on those. Hydrogen will, will under, under only the rarest of weird circumstances, so never in a chemistry class, form two bonds. It doesn't have the capacity to do that. So having a double bond to a hydrogen is not going to happen. And having a hydrogen in between things is not going to happen. At that point, then, you have to look at oxygen, which normally forms two bonds, can form three or one, but normally forms two, and carbon, which normally forms four bonds, can form three or five, but normally five, or normally four, and think, okay, well, what should go in the middle here, the carbon or the oxygen? And the carbon, by forming four bonds, makes sense to go into the middle. If we then think of oxygen forming two bonds, and each hydrogen forming a single bond, we very quickly come up with a reasonable structure that's much more better in connectivity than this one. At this point, we do have a couple missing more electrons, though. We have so far put eight electrons down. The oxygen brings six, hydrogen is each one, so we have four more electrons from the carbon. So those four electrons are going to go here, here, and here. And really, those four aren't from the carbon, per se. I just meant that I hadn't counted the carbon yet in my analysis. So here I have all the electrons. I have a formal charge of zero, 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 and zero, and that would be my molecule. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh...